Okay, so another dihybrid cross with the polygenic trait of color in mice. We've got a C gene that regulates color and a B gene that regulates do you produce p pigment at all. And based on those two, we can figure out these mice colors. Now, top off your coffee if you have one, because this is as complicated as they can make it. Both of these parents are heterozygous for both traits, so here comes a 4 by 4 Punnett square. This parent is, well, first, how do they look? They are a colored mouse, and what color? Black, because of the dominant B, and this mouse is the exact same. So we're crossing two black mice, but they're carrying recessive alleles here that will make this a lot more interesting. Let's see what gametes they can make. We can use foil for this. First, outside, inside, last and the exact same from the dad. So if we get a Punnett square down, uh, there we go. All right, so mom can produce any of these four eggs. Dad can produce the exact same stuff sperm cell wise. There we go. Did I get all that right? Big, 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 little, little, big, little, little. Good. All right. So the baby mice could be big for everything. Big C's, hetero B's. If you skip the video player ahead about a minute at this point, I don't blame you. I'm just copying, and I imagine you're fairly good at this by now. But if you want to see it in detail, here it is. So big C, big C, little b, little b. Uh, those C's should be bigger. I want to make it clear that they're capitals. I did not do a great job at that. Uh, big C, little c. Big B, little b. Big C, little c, two little b's. Big C, little c, two big b's. Big C, little c, big b, little b. Two little c's, two big b's. Now, as we saw in one other problem before, this is the kind of cross where you would normally expect to see a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio, but that can get messed up when one trait affects the other one, like in these in these problems where we have an albino trait that can override the color on another trait. So let's watch and see if we get 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. I suspect it's going to get a little distorted by the fact that these genes interact. But let's let the Punnett square tell us that. The nice thing about that is you never have to memorize or figure out how those interactions are going to work. The Punnett chart will tell you all that if you just let it. So here's all the genotypes for these 16 possible mouse babies, and what do they actually look like? I'm going to type this just so it is a little more legible. So here we have, because there are big C's, this mouse is colored, and it is black. Black again, colored black. Oops, black. I'm saying colored, but I don't mean to type it. Okay, colored black, colored tan, right? Big C's make it, means it produces a color, and what color is it? Little b, little b is the tan or light brown trait. Colored black, colored tan, colored black, colored black. Little c, little c means albino, first one, but there will be more. And sure enough, there's another one. So both of these mice would have been black because they have the big B trait, but little c says they don't produce pigment. Uh, big C is colored, big B is black. Big C is colored, but little b means they're tan. Whoops, not they are not a tank, they are tan. Uh, little c means albino, and little c means albino. So... <laughs>
if you wanted to do genotype ratios, sadly, you would have to write out 16 of these. Uh, I don't think there are any exact duplicates, so yeah, you'd have to write out 16 different genotypes and say there's one sixteenth probability of each of them, which would be quite a chore. For the phenotypes, though, a lot of these we can condense together. Uh, black mice, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a familiar number. Nine black. Are we going to get 9331? No, we're not. We're going to get 3 tan. Now, here's what's trying to happen. This group of four would normally be made up of three who were recessive for one trait and dominant for the other. In this case, that's recessive for the C and dominant for the B and then one who is recessive for both. So 9331 is trying to happen here. The trouble is, if you're recessive for C, this B gets overridden. It doesn't matter what it is. And all these mice end up looking the same. They all end up looking albino. So down here where you'd expect to see three and one different looking mice, instead you just get four albinos. They would have had different colors if only they'd been able to express their color, but the little the C gene made that impossible. So not 9331, but you can see how that structure is still there. We've still got three who are recessive dominant, these these three, and one who is recessive recessive. It just happens that because of the way these genes work together, being recessive C's with black or recessive C's with tan both end up looking the same, you're albino either way.